to this session. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the session on urban air mobility. Um, we will discuss for the next hour some of the challenges and opportunities for UAM solutions. This is a new field um, which has not really been visible uh, on the urban mobility uh, days and, and in this forum before. Um, however, we plan that during the next hour uh, with four complementary speakers to bring some of the challenges to the light and look at the different angles of UAM deployment. My name is Luana Bidashka, I work in the urban mobility team of the Intelligent and Sustainable Transport Unit at DigiMove, and I will be moderating this session for the next hour. Before we start, though, let's go through some of these rules. I know uh, maybe you know them by now, it's our third conference day, but still maybe it's useful for you to know that you can ask questions uh, using the boxes on the left side. Um, for Q&A after each speaker. You can also talk with other participants in the conversation box. Um, I would also recommend that you use the layout button to choose what works better for you on the left side uh, corner. Um, we recommend though using the full screen so you have good visibility of the presentations. Um, now, you probably have heard of the very fantastic breakthrough um, in the USA earlier this April, this year in April in Baltimore, when the kidney was safely delivered by a drone the size of a washing machine in a 10 minute flight across the city. This has been following uh, after three years of deployment and work cooperation between the hospital, um, the academia, the, the university and the city. Yesterday also, Ile de France, together with the REATP, so the Public Transport Authority, launched a collaboration to test passenger drone flights in the region, around the region of Paris. So urban air mobility is a topic of ever increasing interest as drone technology becomes more robust and the versatile uses can bring about important time and cost efficiency for operations in the health sector, in agriculture, logistics or hazardous activities. Here on the slide, you will find some more background information on what the Commission has been doing in this area. So in 2019, the Commission published its initial regulatory framework for the operations of unmanned aircraft. So this will become applicable at the end of this year. It introduces three categories of operations. So open, specific and certified. I will not go into the details. We are not here to discuss the technical requirements and the certifications for drones. We're not here to discuss the technology. Maybe it's also interesting to know that the Commission is working on a draft use space regulation based on the European Aviation Safety Agency opinion from January 2020. If you don't know already, use space is a set of digital services designed to manage the traffic of unmanned aircraft. Use space is also expected to be implemented around urban environments and logistics hubs where there is a high demand for unmanned traffic. It will probably be initially limited to a very low level operations and unmanned aircraft only for practical, operational and legal reasons. Regional air mobility and people transport solutions may initially involve pilots and will likely start with the support of traditional air traffic management. Discussions on use space are ongoing with member states and adoption is not foreseen before early 2021. Work is also ongoing in EASA level, at EASA level to perform a thorough review of all existing aviation regulations to fully integrate unmanned air aircraft, rules of the air, airworthiness, pilot licensing requirements. This will take several years to complete. The work is guided by a so-called concept paper looking at different use cases, including UAM operations with and without the support of use space services. I also included here on the slide a link to the CESAR joint undertaking, a report which was published earlier this year, looking at 19 completed research and demonstration projects addressing everything from the concept of operations for drone operations, critical communications, surveillance and tracking, information management to aircraft systems, ground-based technologies, cyber resilience and geofencing. 
Also interesting to know what, have, what has been happening um, at the area of smart, in the area of smart cities um, in the European Innovation Partnership for Smart Cities and Communities. I'm very happy to be joined here today by one of the leaders, by the leaders actually of this initiative, Vasilis Aguridas. So this is um, uh, working with 42 cities interested in developing drone solutions. This is a joint effort with cities and regions and is organized in different task forces. This is also one of the driving forces under um, that has uh, created under Horizon 2020, um, different calls uh, to, um, for proposals on urban air mobility uh, to expand the knowledge base. And these calls um, yielded project responses, which are expected to support cities and regions with better planning tools to integrate new applications of urban air mobility in the passenger and freight systems. I don't see the presentation anymore. Um, I hope you, the audience, can still see it. Ah, voila, it's back. Um, okay, and some of the upcoming work that we're looking at right now, uh, we are preparing a practitioner briefing for uh, integrating urban air mobility into sustainable urban mobility planning. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker and invite him to join me now on the screen, uh, Vasilis. So he, he is the EU public, uh, he's the head of public co-creation and ecosystem outreach activities at Airbus. He is also the leader of uh, UAM initiative and he's going to talk about some of the results and activities of this initiative. Vasilis. Uh, I hope you can hear us. I hope uh, you can see us and uh, good luck with your presentation. Thank you, Luana, for the introduction. I hope you can see my slide and you can see and hear me. Perfect. Okay, very good. So uh, as, uh, in fact, Luana has done a very good introduction for the UM initiative. I just want to add that uh, this is part of the Sustainable Urban Mobility Action Cluster. Uh, of the um, EIPACC that uh, Luana mentioned. So we're not here to talk about aviation technologies. We're here about to talk uh, sustainable urban mobility. And this has been the, from the very beginning, the, the context and frame uh, of the initiative. And that's why you can see that uh, what you see as a title for, the, for this presentation is actually the motto of this uh, initiative, the UM initiative. It's about smart mobility in smart cities walk, ride, drive, fly. So by definition, we see the fly, the third uh, dimension, as complementary to existing solutions. We are not here to, to replace uh, the existing systems. We are here to, to explore what would be the opportunities for improving the overall uh, efficiency and effectiveness of the mobility, urban mobility system. Another clarification I want to, to do at the, the beginning is about what do we mean about urban air mobility? There are different approaches, different definitions, depending what is the, the sector you are coming from. From the experience uh, of the um, initiative, we put it simply as low level air traffic uh, over populated areas at scale. So each of these elements has a specific meaning which means that urban air mobility can be not only about drones, it could be, if, or air taxis, it could be also about uh, air zeppelins. What is the important thing is that we're talking about low level air traffic over populated areas. And this is where the urban can be a bit misleading, or at least for people who are working on the mobility sector, urban is, means something very specific. So it is different urban mobility for suburban or regional. Here, the urban, I would say, is more on quotes and relates more on flying over populated areas, which makes a big difference, at least from the aviation perspective, in terms of safety and security. So to go a bit more detail about what this initiative is about, uh, as Luana mentioned, uh, it's about 42 cities from 14 different countries, countries in Europe that came together to establish a community, in fact, that uh, can raise the, the voice of, of the cities and regions 
towards this uh, emerging phenomenon that is coming main, mainly led from the technology advancement. To our understanding is the only initiative that really talks uh, from the city perspective. So it's about positioning the cities in, in a dialogue about urban air mobility and all the different technologies around it. Uh, and this is the main focus. The main focus is to identify, to explore, having the cities at the driver's seat, what are the real needs, how we could use this type of technology. It's about developing local ecosystems with all the different stakeholders uh, about um, the urban air mobility opportunities, challenges, issues. To be more specific, uh, from whatever we see or we hear, we can witness that, okay, something is happening here, and in fact, traffic seems to go to the third dimension. Uh, which means we can have a new type of traffic with different type of vehicles there. And as you have seen also from the introduction of Luana, there is a lot of, on, of on ongoing work through EASA, the European Aviation Safety Agency, and through technical communities um, driven mainly from uh, CESAR JU to define what is called the use space. The use space in simple words is about the air traffic at a low uh, level over cities, over autonomous systems. So there is this urban element that makes the safety and security very important. And this is where the technical communities are working on. What we have acknowledged, however, it is that this urban, it is more than safety and security. The cities, the citizens, the society, they take for granted that a system has to be safe to fly and secure. Otherwise, we wouldn't consider it in, in a city environment. So this urban now, from the cities and region perspective, brings some more opportunities and challenges, a new status quo that relates further to the airspace air digitalization, that it is an issue and the technical communities, uh, communities try to address, to infrastructure issues, to the interfaces between the aviation and the mobility, the new type um, of digital services we may create and the businesses that can be accompanied. And I say business, but in fact, it's about applications of this technology for uh, specific uh, societal benefits. And all of these are encompassed and sometimes challenged to how quickly they can happen or not by the existing uh, policy and regulatory ap approaches that we have seen in many cases cannot really encompass the emerging technologies. And this is not only for aviation, we have examples even from uh, e-scooters. So there is a challenge there that we need to have this type of new mindset on how we regulate. We can have different approaches there. Can we have, for example, pre-legal innovation to, to support that we can test easier uh, different deployments. Today, if you want to do a pilot project, for example, uh, with drones, it's not that easy. Uh, and this is where the role, in fact, of the cities as test beds um, has to be further promoted. A lot of work has been done on that from the Commission, but I think we need to, to further promote the role of, say, a city as a lab. What the initiative has been trying to do was to bring all of these challenges together in order to ensure that we can have socially embraced uh, applications of urban air mobility. And we have identified three main streams uh, in order to, to achieve this. One is to establish public and private support. The other one is to seek the opportunities of integration, synergies of ground and air, and to co-create with citizens. And some of the achievements of the initiative has been that we have managed to position the cities to have a role, a recognized role in the use space, regu use space regulatory framework. So the cities have given already some opinion. Perhaps it's not enough yet, but the first step has been uh, made. Uh, second thing is that uh, we have been uh, working for the last almost two years in exchanging with the European Investment Bank on how it could support the cities to find ways to finance this. And Ozan uh, follows uh, later on, he will give more details on how the European Investment Bank supports um, uh, the cities of the initiative. 
We had also the recent uh, Horizon 2020 calls on urban air mobility, three in, in the domain of research innovation action and one on a coordination support action. Uh, already uh, Luana uh, mentioned that and also Gosia later on, she will give some information about this. And we have already another project that it was before this call is the Harmony and Maria is later on going to talk which is one of the first projects that talks about spatial planning, urban planning and mobility, and has already integrated demonstrations in two cities, Oxford site and Tricala, that by the way, are also part of, of the UM initiative. We have seen more recently that member states have uh, started to support the cities. So we have the most recent example uh, yesterday uh, with Paris, where the region is committed to, to support. I'm not sure if there is explicit funding yet there, but a few weeks ago, we had the Bavarian government that has decided to, uh, to give uh, 100 million uh, euros over the next three to four years uh, around um, the initiative of the, in, of the city of Ingolstadt. Now it is in preparation what will be the exact, uh, the exact way that this funding will be available through direct uh, say funding or public-private partnerships. And we have the, the example of Toulouse uh, for, for a year now, where uh, Toulouse has managed to uh, win a, a major project in France from national funding about urban planning and urban mobility. And the UEM features a very significant part of this project that is called Villa Zil. It's 113 million out of 160, 5170, if I remember well. And this is a, a typical example, not of direct money, but of public-private partnership. So we see, these are just few examples of things that are happening. Hamburg has been already uh, advancing and maturing some of its uh, demonstrations. There is something going on there. Some cities already take the leadership. And we're working now, the initiative has been tasked by DG Move to work on the UN practitioners briefing to be uh, integrated um, in the SUMP framework. Uh, we have some delays because uh, of COVID as with many activities, but the cities are really now taking uh, up this uh, task and uh, very soon we will be able to involve more stakeholders in, in order to have the first version of that. So I will uh, just uh, conclude by saying all of this we don't do just alone, just about talking uh, with this community, we try to outreach, we collaborate with uh, ITES, Europertico, with UITP, with POLIS, and uh, with the most recent activities of the EIT Urban Mobility. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vasilis, and also thank you for um, mentioning the other speakers uh, for, from the session uh, into your uh, presentation, uh, because they quite intertwined uh, with, with um, um, what you are doing. Uh, so I would like to um, see if there are any questions from the audience right now for Vasilis. I haven't seen any. Um, so because this is not the case, I will ask you a question. So please stay with me. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, Drones have a very disruptive nature or could have a very disruptive nature. Um, how could cities potentially mitigate this um, um, this part of the the activities? what would you what would you advise them to uh, to do? or um, better yet, how to um, uh, because the regulatory uh, aspect sometimes at the local level is not as uh, quick as the innovation is happening. Um, so uh, what we have seen from the initiative the last three years is that different types of cities, even the initiative you, you have seen on the map with the 42 cities is not really homogeneous on the way that the cities uh, behave and it is normal. Some can be more committed, some less, and can be in fact observers. So what we try to do through the initiative, it is to uh, make the cities aware uh, that they have to act early. Don't just wait that things are already in place because perhaps it could be too late to influence what would be the role of the cities. One of the key findings, say, of, of the initiative is that we need to position cities early. Otherwise, it will be 
a strong technology push. We need to engage not only the cities, but the urban actors in more general. Mm -hmm. This is not about an aviation topic. This is about an urban topic, original topic. Mm -hmm. So the advice is try to engage in different projects, uh, try to come uh, in contact with uh, our existing and say more leading cities to learn what they have been doing. We will try to share this through the SUMP, a practitioner's briefing, so it can establish a further platform or exchange uh, and really try to find ways to co-create for us this is the key the it i know it is a buzzword the co-creation uh, but is really where it is the source of making sure that we can have the different viewpoint viewpoints expressed mm. and it is more yeah. than presentations for example uh, demonstrations city city labs would be very good platforms to create these dialogues, and it's more than a dialogue, it's about uh, active engagement. We need to influence things. It, it is not just about to talk about them. Mm. And this is what we try to do by positioning the cities, for example, in the EU space regulatory framework, that the cities can be officially recognized as a key stakeholder. Yeah. Thank you, Vasilis. That's a very clear message. And I have a feeling that this is going to really test member states' capacity to do and practice multi-level governance. So um, I think this leads us very well into the next presentation from Małgorzata Davoska. So she is a, um, a plenipotentiary of the Ministry of Infrastructure in Poland. Um, and she will be talking about the Polish approach to developing an overarching strategy to urban air mobility. So um, she works together also with the European Institute for Aviation. And um, as far as I understand, she will play a, a key part in the European funded project Assured. So uh, Małgorzata, thank you very much for joining us uh, today. Um, I leave you the floor. Uh, thank you very much. Welcome everyone. And thank you very much for invitation to this uh, very interesting discussion. A very uh, up-to-date, I would say, uh, in this time, especially due to COVID. Uh, uh, first, I will uh, show you a little bit. I, will, I want to say what I'm doing, what is my responsibility and what, what we want to achieve in my country. Uh, I, I started two, three years ago. I was invited to uh, prepare the strategy for drones uh, in, in Poland. Uh, uh, and I brought, uh, brought the concept how to develop the whole domain in, in, in my country, starting from, from a flagship project. Uh, and now we are preparing the strategy for the whole drone domain in Poland, starting from uh, UTM to uh, urban air mobility. So it's a huge work uh, was done to date. And now we are facing new challenges uh, due to the fact that the technology is developing and the regulatory framework is developing. And we also also all facing uh, the pandemic uh, and uh, new challenges and new needs actually that we can uh, use uh, wh where we can use drones uh, so uh, a new time so this is my role and I wanted to uh, give you a flavor uh, of our uh, public policy and strategy in, in Poland how we how we do work in this complex environment uh, and how we cope with the complexity of uh, the new domain, which is, uh, to my opinion, uh, one of the most complex and, uh, and uh, difficult and challenging uh, area of uh, economy of technology due to the fact that drones are flying in the real world. This is not about cyber, it's all about real uh, real uh, uh, environment and about uh, our lives and uh, citizens uh, next slide please if i think uh, due to the fact that I'm coping, I cope with the uh, with the public policy. We started with uh, some t some tests and some um, some uh, evaluation of the let's say business case for the public policy. And uh, in uh, started in 2017 and in 2019 at the beginning last year, uh, we published uh, we published a white paper uh, with the uh, estimate uh, estimates for the drone market. So and uh, 
this gave us a um, justification for our uh, undertakings uh, in Poland, and I hope it, uh, it, it can be also helpful for everyone in the world. And according to the Polish uh, Institute of Economy, the value of the drone market in terms of the flying, uh, the flying uh, uh, robots, let's say, the value is uh, not that high because it's it's uh, it was estimated on uh, 3.2 billion zlotys, which is not a huge value. But the value of integration of drones into the economy is, is, is really significant, and did this gave us uh, the response, the answer that this is not about uh, recreation, it's, uh, it's a serious case and we have to plan our steps to, uh, to benefit and to help our businesses to benefit from this new emerging area. Next slide, please. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, uh, we have to cope as I, as I mentioned before with a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, complexities uh, social political complexity structural complexity and also new emerging uh, projects are uh, we come across every day almost so the the, the question is how to organize everything to streamline the processes and to plan the, uh, the, the roadmap for uh, all for us, uh, for the public administration and for our stakeholders to enable the cooperation, as Vasilis mentioned before, be, be, between among all stakeholders in my country, in the region, the European Union and uh, globally. As you can see on the map, we have uh, there are some just examples about uh, projects that we are, we, our stakeholders are uh, involved in, uh, starting from from EIP SCC, which is a really great initiative, very fruitful to especially to just the who is a partner of this initiative and uh, which uh, gave uh, an excellent example. For for the cooperation for uh, finding new um, uh, new uh, directory and new um, uh, wording for the new area uh, through uh, horizon projects like assured uh, assured recently granted to the, the ILOT, uh, which is the, one of the uh, one of the institutes uh, from the research network uh, which is a large uh, large project uh, uh, and also um, uh, harmony which is also uh, is, is one of the of the um, stakeholders here here uh, and next slide so as you can see uh, this is uh, this is uh, a lot of initiatives and we have very limited resources in public administration so the question was how to organize everything and we decided to there, there is a, a uh, it, it was decided to establish a steering committee on the, the very high level and the steering committee in 2017 uh, decided to split works, uh, split uh, efforts into three blocks and the first, our priority was to organize the digital infrastructure for uh, drone operations. So uh, this is a this is a, one of our flagship projects and uh, with a very good resu uh, results, because uh, safety and security is a key uh, issue in uh, urban air mobility and uh, drone operations and also in separation of uh, um, traditional uh, aircraft from drones and so on and so on. So this is our prior priority and. Uh, Another initiative which is uh, key and very close to my heart is CDD, which is uh, in fact, uh, uh, a techni from a te technical point of view, is a sandbox. It's a regulatory technological sandbox, which helps us to, uh, to process, to, uh, to uh, help companies and cities to uh, organize and to uh, um, validate their projects uh, with regards to uh, EU regulations and uh, local regulations and everything which is uh, needed to uh, allow uh, drones fly uh, into the, in, in, in airspace. So this is a sandbox uh, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, handled mainly by GZM and uh, PANSA. Uh, 
civil aviation authority and also port of gdynia is is, is, the, is, a, is a partner to this initiative uh, and we are very happy because there are some very good outcomes of these projects um, there is a something with, that we will share very soon is a procedure of testing uh, uh, testing uh, let's say pilots uh, uh, with in accordance with the european legislation so it was worked out by or worked out by uh, institute of aviation uh, with uh, with the, the city aviation authority very helpful too and this is the focal point for our initiatives because it uh, helps us to um, to validate the, the business models and the technology and also drone valley cluster we started with the drone valley uh, the idea in metropolis but in fact we have uh, we are integrated all uh, initiatives in Poland, starting from uh, from uh, Katowice, from GZM to Port Gdynia, Poznań, Navi Hub, and also all our stakeholders and clusters, uh, cluster virtual clusters members are uh, working together and working internationally. So uh, we are we are what we want to do is to start from vision through projects uh, to to, uh, to obtain value, to realize all the numbers you saw, you saw at the very beginning. And the last slide, please. And the outcomes, because we work a little bit differently from what's going on in, in the EU, uh, European Union, for example, uh, from uh, on the Commission level, but we adjusted our steps to our reality. So, uh, it is uh, the outcomes are quite positive because Poland is uh, is uh, I believe that uh, our public policy is quite uh, clear to our stakeholders in my country. Uh, we are prepared to implement and to use, use uh, EU regulatory framework in Poland. Bivilos uh, in Poland was introduced uh, in 2019. Uh, we have uh, introduced PASA UTM, which is the first UTM certified by the Civil Aviation Authority. And also GZM is the metropolis, which is uh, very ready to be drawn ready city and the metropolis. So, and the last, what I wanted to say is about uh, medical transportation. Last week, uh, after positive test uh, in, in Warsaw, between a COVID, with COVID blood samples between two hospitals, uh, in uh, April 29, uh, a larger project was uh, was launched by uh, PANSA and one of the main hospital, COVID hospitals in Poland, and we are starting large uh, medical transportation initiative in Poland. So something good in bad times. Thank you very much. It's from my side. I see Lawana, so uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Gosia, as well, for this uh, informative presentation. Uh, you're doing quite a lot in Poland, I see. Um, but I'm wondering, how do you cooperate with cities um, uh, in, in these structures that you have put in place? Um, who do you work with, with in cities? Who is your main interlocutor? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for this question. Uh, in 2018, we decided, uh, we, after some uh, interaction with cities, we saw that it's a very difficult uh, area, uh, positive but difficult, and so I really appreciate what Vasily is doing with uh, Metropolis in, uh, in, in Europe, and we decided to choose uh, a partner. Uh, which will help us to uh, implement and to streamline and to implement the public policy. And our partner for the governmental project is GZM, uh, Upper Silesia Metropolis. And uh, Metropolis uh, is a, an organization which is uh, uh, with very specific tasks uh, uh, focused on transportation. So the transport, not only uh, drones, but every means of transport is uh, uh, in uh, the powers of uh, Metropolis. And Metropolis is working with 41 cities in Poland, Poland in the region, in the mining region. So through this cooperation, we have uh, a little bit, uh, uh, not a little bit, but very, very big help from uh, with the dialogue with cities and which is very interesting uh, GZM is uh, the cities which are uh, integrated under GZM uh, umbrella are different they are very close 
uh, each to other because it's one region, but they are different. There is a there are a huge variety of of, of cities of um, uh, local governments with different uh, with different uh, um, goals, with different objectives, and mm. the societies. So uh, it's really fascinating to see how the project is developing in uh, in Jizatan. Yeah, th thank you very much for this answer. I would have more questions for you, actually, especially because you, you mentioned uh, the drone-ready city. Uh, and I would be curious, what's your opinion and what would be your advice to other cities to become drone-ready? But mm -hmm. we don't have time right now. Um, I would like to move on to our next speaker, which is um, Maria. Um, Maria, I hope you can hear us and you can see us. And let's see, here you are. So, um, Dr. Maria Camargiani, um, you are an associate professor of transport and energy and the head of uh, mobility as a service lab, um, working in the Energy Institute at UCL. Uh, and you are also here on behalf of the Civitas project, Harmony. Uh, Maria is going to talk to us about uh, setting up drone demonstrations from, uh, from your experiences in the pilot labs uh, in, in the project Harmony. Uh, thank you very much, Maria, for joining us. Uh, I let you the floor. Thank you, Luana. you have the floor. <laughs> okay, so I can see my presentation. So thank you very much for the introduction and thank you everybody who joined um, our session. As uh, Luana said, uh, it's uh, quite an uh, interesting topic. Uh, we've seen recently uh, some research um, taking place on uh, this um, uh, topic. So uh, I'm here to share with you our experience with uh, setting up uh, drone demonstrations and uh, I mainly use um, insights from the Harmony project that it is uh, a, a project that uh, belongs to the Civitas uh, family and it is a Horizon 2020 funded project. Uh, the vision of Harmony is to develop um, a, a new generation of uh, tools, planning tools, um, spatial and transport planning tools that uh, will help authorities to um, harmoniously integrate uh, the traditional and new mobility services. And in the new mobility services, now we also have um, urban air mobility. So apart uh, from focusing on developing uh, this uh, platform, the Harmony platform, uh, we also have uh, demonstrations with um, autonomous vehicles, both for passenger and freight, but also demonstrations for drones um, for freight purposes. And uh, we do these demonstrations because we would like to collect data to see how these services are integrated with the traditional transport system and then set all the rules in um, the Harmony uh, platform. So, uh, in Harmony, we have six metro metropolitan areas uh, where we do uh, several uh, demonstrations and uh, testings. And we have three areas where we uh, work on urban air mobility. Uh, the first area is uh, the Oxford Sir County in uh, the UK, where we demonstrate uh, drones who carry freight within um, the Milton Park. It is a business area in um, Oxfordshire County. Uh, at the same time, uh, we also integrate the UTM system, the unmanned traffic management system of Airbus with the urban traffic management control of uh, the Oxfordshire County Council, meaning that we integrate uh, the a system that uh, handles uh, the air, the drones, with the system that handles the highways, the, the roads, in order to see how this will collaborate. And to my knowledge, this is um, the first uh, demonstration that uh, takes uh, place, collaboration in real life of UTM and UTMC. 
Uh, then we have uh, a demonstration of drones uh, that collaborate with autonomous um, vans. So we try to do uh, micro depots with autonomous vehicles and drones. And um, of course, with uh, these demonstrations, we test the technology, but testing the technology is not enough. So all these demonstrations are accompanied with Oops, something happened to my slides. And it was not me. Okay, this is my slide. And um, all of these um, uh, demonstrations are accompanied with uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, surveys to the stakeholders who are involved in these demonstrations. So, for example, the operators, um, uh, the, the public authorities and um, also uh, social surveys. We uh, want to know what are citizens' uh, concerns, um, uh, opinions about these services. And um, okay, this is my slide. I don't know who moves my slides, but uh, please let's stay on this slide. Um, uh, and uh, we do these uh, surveys and data collection before the demonstration and after the demonstration because we would like to understand if um, the, the communities' uh, uh, opinions, attitudes um, change after they really experience um, the UAM services. Um, then uh, uh, we have a demonstration in uh, Tricala, uh, where the use case that we have is to carry uh, medicines from the city center to surrounding villages where mainly uh, older population is uh, living with uh, limited um, accessibility. And again, in this situation, we do acceptance surveys both to stakeholders to the supply side and also to citizens before and after the demonstration. And um, in uh, GZM, um, Gossi already mentioned the Harmony project. Um, we have started now um, working on setting up uh, use cases and we will follow again the same approach. Uh, we will uh, discuss with uh, stakeholders uh, what are uh, their concerns. Also, we will involve citizens uh, because uh, the citizens' uh, opinion and beliefs are uh, very important to any uh, initiative that um, authorities would like to, to implement. And um, if um, uh, we have uh, uh, time and uh, agree with uh, GZM now, we have also the potential to also do some uh, real-life drone demonstrations in uh, GZM within Harmony as well. So, um, in uh, each area, uh, we uh, set up these demonstrations and um, our um, ultimate goal is uh, to so this is um, uh, the drones that uh, we use for our demonstrations we have drones lifting um, several um, weights we have heavy and light lifting uh, drones they are provided by uh, grief aviation a harmony partner and um, actually we do all this um, and we follow this uh, I would like to say um, holistic or complete approach by involving everyone uh, in uh, these demonstrations because we would like to provide uh, recommendations uh, for uh, sustainable urban mobility plans for um, urban air mobility. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, several projects uh, are trying to do this and uh, we will be really happy to merge powers and exchange knowledge and uh, contribute all together towards um, assumes uh, about um, urban air mobility. Um, so what we have identified uh, so far is that uh, there are uh, several gaps in uh, the urban air mobility um, sector. Uh, the 
the collaboration of uh, the Public Transport Authority uh, with uh, the UAM dimension, the third dimension, is very weak in uh, several locations. But um, to be positive, uh, there are a lot of um, uh, uh, willingness from the public authorities' side to learn about this, and they are quite open to, to integrate um, uh, UAM in uh, their uh, public uh, system. But of course, a lot of research has to be done first, uh, make sure that um, uh, all the safety requirements are met, and uh, then go on with uh, this. So here there are some um, aspects that are required for um, urban air mobility. Uh, we have uh, very good um, um, specifications uh, for GDPR and uh, vehicle specification. Uh, there is some work about air traffic management, cyber security, surveillance, uh, zooms, uh, but uh, there are some uh, topics related to urban air mobility that um, the findings are uh, let's say, very limited or in some cases even uh, non-existent. Um, social acceptance, for example, and um, social embracement is one of these. And uh, within Harmony, we heavily involve uh, uh, all the actors, uh, the stakeholders and the citizens to try to provide insights for some of these boxes. So, um, um, uh, these are the, the Harmony partners. So we are 21 partners from uh, nine European cities. And uh, this is uh, the last slide of uh, my uh, presentation. Uh, unfortunately, with the COVID-19 situation, we had some delays in uh, the demonstrations. I uh, hope we, wa we will be able in uh, um, March 2021 to um, uh, materialize these uh, demonstrations. Thank you. Thank you to you, Maria, for, for this presentation. Um, yeah, you mentioned that um, social acceptance is one of the, the red um, items still flagging up. Um, I was wondering, do you have the results of the acceptance surveys um, from the cities where you performed um, uh, drone flights? Uh, unfortunately, not yet, uh, because we have a lot of delays due to the COVID-19 situation. Uh, but um, before the end of 2020, most of uh, these uh, surveys, the before demonstration phase, uh, hope that uh, they will go out. I see. Okay. Yeah, so Thank I you. do not have uh, to provide any more information on this yet, but uh, hope I will be able soon. Not yet for okay. Um, then I, I will maybe ask you another question. Um, do you think there are research and innovation needs that are still to be met uh, in this area? Or what would be the priorities for research and innovation concerning urban air mobility? So, uh, of course, there is always room for research and innovation. And as an academic, uh, I cannot say <laughs> that we have covered this. Um, in the technology, we still uh, need um, uh, research uh, in terms of uh, how far the, way the drones can go, um, about um, safety, about uh, the batteries of the drones, the weight uh, they can uh, lift. Uh, then uh, we need uh, a lot of research in the business models uh, aspect because um, okay, we have this uh, technology, but in the end, uh, uh, when uh, it is to be utilized, the, um, the actors involved in this, they would like at some point to make profit. So there is a lot of room uh, in the business uh, models um, mm. uh, sector. And of course, in uh, the social uh, acceptance and uh, social embracement, where in order to give the green light to these technologies to go out to the market, you should also tick this box. You have to make sure that the citizens feel safe and also that the citizens will use these technologies to also be profitable, for example. 
Thank you very much, Maria. I think that that about covers it, right? Uh, and you also lead into the the, the next uh, presentation with what you said about the the business model, uh, and then and the business case Thank you, for drone usage. Uh, so I would take this opportunity to invite our next speaker, our final speaker of the session, uh, Ozan Ilmaz. Uh, he is coming from the European Investment Bank. Um, and he will be talking about uh, the UAM business model development and market study done in the context of the EIB's advisory hub. So, Ozan, thank you very much for joining us. Um, please, you have the floor. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Luana, for, for these uh, introductions. And then thank you very much for everyone. Uh, so. My name is uh, Ersan Yilmaz. Uh, I'm working as a smart transport specialist uh, at European Investment Bank uh, in the Projects Directorate uh, Transport Department. Uh, I'm also the acting manager uh, of, of this assignment uh, of the bank. Uh, and also I'm also representing a, a, a big team from, from, from the bank. Uh, and uh, uh, so the, this this assignment is in fact uh, you see on the slide it is urban air mobility business model development and market study uh, so uh, let me switch to the next slide so let me uh, briefly give you some information background information uh, about the study and also considering the time uh, in fact I, I want to spare uh, spend some more time on the early findings uh, then I will skip these parts uh, quickly. Uh, so it is it is a new assignment, but it has a long history. In fact, with with uh, Vasilis and with the Urban Air Mobility Initiative, uh, and uh, we have started this assignment uh, in February uh, this year. Uh, our initial plan was to complete this study in October, but uh, the, the, there were some delays in the timeline, and currently we are expecting to complete this study in February. Uh, and the ultimate goal of this study, in fact, was to support, to contribute to the progression uh, in urban air mobility field uh, in, in Europe. Uh, and uh, we have two main objectives uh, from, from, from this study. Uh, first one, in fact, is to support uh, projects, uh, the demonstration projects of the Urban Air Mobility Initiative some of the projects to develop their business cases or to further uh, to help them further advance in their projects project development activities and uh, the other uh, pillar uh, key objective of this assignment is to uh, provide a ma wider market assessment uh, for for uh, for urban air mobility uh, in europe especially addressing the market failures, market gaps, financing needs, research needs, uh, and also to see the opportunities and also the challenges uh, for the project promoters and also uh, establish uh, a clear picture for the investment needs uh, in the future in this field. Uh, and this, this assignment is supported by the European Investment Advisory Hub uh, and uh, we 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 are getting support from an external consultant. Uh, it is Atkins, uh, a British company. Uh, they are working on the assignment. Uh, and you see on this slide, in fact, we have four main tasks in this assignment. The, the first task is a screening phase to to uh, screen the projects the, and also to understand their maturity levels uh, and to select some projects to to go further uh, and uh, in the task two the selected projects will be supported uh, in developing their business cases uh, and uh, the other you see task three divider market assessment in fact it is it is starting from the beginning so it the goal of this task uh, to 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 see the potential of urban air mobility in, in Europe. Uh, and uh, while doing market assessment, uh, the, the, the purpose is also to get some data from the real cases uh, that we, we, we are assessing and we are working uh, in task one and task two. So in this way, in fact, this task three will be a kind of combination of uh, a bottom-up approach. The data is coming from real projects. Uh, and also a top-down approach, uh, the data coming from other aggregated, uh, the, the other studies that are using aggregated data. 
And the final task, in fact, it is a communication uh, task. So we are also aiming to, to sh uh, share these uh, findings with the wider community. I will uh, move quickly. Uh, early findings. In fact, uh, I want to speak about I want to spend uh, the, the rest of the time for on this slide. So these are the early findings from the screening phase. Uh, still, uh, we, we the, there are several studies ongoing uh, within the project, within the assignment. Uh, these findings are coming from the screening phase of the assignment. The, the first the first finding, uh, we can say that all the projects uh, present uh, exciting opportunities to, to expand the use of drone technology and also enhancing social value. This is very important. And also related to this first finding, health sector. So it is it is, uh, it is the forefront sector for, for drone applications. Uh, and the majority of projects are from the health sector, uh, especially delivery of medical supplies. Uh, and uh, this is also a strong signal, in fact, from, from the market. Uh, to see that the early full-scale deployments will be from health sector, so we can say that. Of course, the other we will see the other sector applications, but the health sector will be in front, so we can definitely say that. And also, this is also important for the public acceptance, which is very important, and public acceptance for health applications is also at a very high level. So uh, this is an important finding uh, we, 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 we saw. Uh, and in the third, uh, still, of course, urban air mobility is an emerging factor, emerging uh, sector for future mobility. Uh, and many projects are still at their explore, exploratory phases. Uh, still, they are exploring the, the, their uh, the benefits, infrastructure needs uh, required for the full rollout. Uh, these these key items are still explored, uh, and so we need uh, some more years to see a full scale deployment uh, in in this field. Uh, and also, the technology is still a challenge. Yes, there are important advancements in technologies, uh, but still there is a mismatch between the specifications of the existing technologies and also the specification. Uh, for, for the business requirements or the logistics requirements. So uh, still uh, there's a gap uh, between uh, the, the business requirements and the technology, uh, but it can be easily, uh, this gap easily uh, can be easily closed uh, because there are other important challenges. Uh, and the fifth finding, uh, many projects lacked clear quantification of key impacts. So this is very critical, and also this is also critical for uh, deploying a public sector projects, especially. Uh, and also we have uh, in many projects we don't have uh, in, uh, quite good level of information on the funding or the commercial revenue models. Uh, so this part, the, the, this financial part of the projects, uh, still it should be solved. Uh, so this is still a challenge, uh, and uh, the, the, there is uh, there is a need to work on these financing issues uh, are important. Uh, and uh, the finally, uh, we see that the strongest projects are those which have clearly identified and also the evidenced. Uh, the need for the scheme, proposed scheme, the project. Uh, and also these projects have been able to clearly articulate these through the identifications of the benefits uh, and clear identification of uh, the impact and the, the quantifications of these impact and the benefits are really important. Uh, and uh, on top of these, uh, these projects, the strongest projects, they have obtained a buy-in for, for their project from a range of key stakeholders. Uh, and uh, and uh, quantification of benefits, uh, this is important. And also getting uh, support from a wider stakeholder, it is also another important thing. Uh, so we see that strongest projects are doing good in these two things. 
And uh, finally, let me update you about the next stages. So we will be continuing working on wider market assessment report. Uh, so the, the, the works will continue on that. And we are also at the phase of initiating business case development stage for the selected projects. Uh, and after completing these two items, uh, the communications will start. Uh, first, we will uh, do a results workshop uh, end 2020 or early 2021. Uh, and then we will have a conclusive meeting with a wider, uh, with a, uh, to, to present the project to, to the wider community. It will be in the early 2021. And uh, thank you very much. This is the end of my slide. And also we have run out of our time. Uh, so, uh, any questions we can receive so it is the floor is yours Luana uh, Luana can you hear me yes can you hear me ah, yes I hear you now Yes. Okay. Thank you for this presentation, Ozan. So, despite this very ominous uh, timer that is uh, th that is just uh, dripping, uh, we can go over time five minutes uh, in order to to address one of the questions that was asked here um, in the question section. Uh, so, the question reads as follows. I will just put it on the screen as well. Um, so feel free to, to skip in to add to this question, but uh, Ozan, I think this would actually be more suitable for you. Um, so the question is like this. To what extent do you think drones can be an urban logistics solution for all municipalities? Or is it just an innovation that large municipalities or companies can afford to implement? Something about this, Luana, if I may. Yes, uh, please. Uh, we see some some uh, deployments, uh, nearly full scale deployments from the private sector. So you you already mentioned these uh, examples from United States. Uh, yes. So in fact. Uh, if there is a business case, the private sector, yes, will deploy these services. Uh, so, so if they see some value, yes. Uh, but when it comes to public sector, uh, we may not have this business case. So we should look further the other benefits of the applications. Uh, I think uh, yes, the municipalities uh, they they will they will deploy these services because they should. Uh, and they should also demonstrate the benefits of these services. Uh, it, it is a matter of time. It's a matter of time. Uh, it is not a matter of whether to do this or not. Uh, but we see that there are important public services uh, that, that can have a major benefits to the society. So what, what the municipalities should do, in fact, to, to demonstrate quantify these benefits and to demonstrate there is an economic case for their projects. So then they can uh, implement these investments. Uh, but if they don't do this, so the private sector with positive business case, they will do these implementations and uh, these services, the private sector services will use the space. Uh, so there is a competition and we should see mm -hmm. the competition and there will be a competition for their space. Uh, so, so then we should decide so mm. what services we will, we will we will use these services mm. for, for health sector or for for package delivery. So mm. uh, clear point. Yes, thank you. Do something. Can I ask Maria, something, Luana? Maria, uh, please. So thank you. And um, from our experience within the Harmony project, we see that uh, we have these um, demonstrations and we try to build the business cases in um, Oxfordshire, in uh, Tricala, and uh, definitely they are not large municipalities. Um, we see that uh, 
the public sector should be the enabler and then the companies, uh, if there is a business case, they can come in. Okay. Thank you. I also see a question here. Um, is the use of the drones a matter of visual pollution? And if yes, how can it be prevented? Would anybody like to contribute? Can I say something? Uh, if it's to answer this question. Is one of the topics like uh, uh, noise pollution. So this is when I mentioned at the beginning about definition of UAM, uh, mm -hmm. that scale. It's one of the factors that we have to consider. So how do we, how do we manage not only noise, which is a lot of the effort today, and it's a very big challenge, mm -hmm. uh, but imagine everything is safe, everything even is quiet, then it comes the visual factor. So it, the UM is a very complex topic. You address one and another topic comes or you see. Uh, so that's why it is very important to have this multi-stakeholder uh, approach and to have the what we call the social embracement. It is not just the user, it's even the people who don't use it. Yes, of course, it depends on the density also of, um, of the technology and how, um, how many of them are in the visual line of sight, I guess. Maria. And um, our acceptance level, it, uh, it will be also depend on the use case. For example, I may be able to accept this uh, visual or noise pollution if it is to transfer uh, medicines uh, to the elder population who lives in the villages or to transfer organs from hospital to hospital, but I, I, the citizens may not be uh, willing to accept uh, drones carrying uh, uh, pizzas or uh, parcels. So that's why uh, this is what we are trying to set up now in, uh, in Katowice in GZM, having different use cases and see for which UK, uh, use cases we can accept the visual noise, whatever pollution, uh, and for which UM use cases uh, we cannot. Mm. Thank you, Maria. Um, I would like to, to thank everybody actually for, for their contributions to, to the discussion. Um, if you look into the conversation box, there is a comment also from Marianne Renault, who is giving more information about the UAM ecosystem um, that is happening 35 kilometers from Paris. Uh, I think there is also a news in French, if you speak French, on Le Figaro. Um, and um, I think this is it. Uh, yes, there is also a link to, to Volocopter, to a press release of the company that is going to be involved uh, in this pilot uh, from Francoise Gaspar. Um, and another comment from uh, Wolfgang, who is associating our concept of drone-ready city that was mentioned by Gosia uh, with something that was already do, done in the Coexist project for CCAM, for connected, cooperative, and uh, automated uh, uh, vehicles. Uh, so the Coexist project, another Horizon-funded um, initiative. Okay, so uh, we are really uh, going over time here. So I would like to thank everybody again for joining us uh, this afternoon. Thank you for your contributions, for your preparations, for joining in the dry run. Uh, the session is be has been recorded and will be made available online and so will the presentations. So let's keep the conversation going as well. Uh, and I look forward to hear more about the results of these uh, projects and initiatives in the future. Thank you, have a good day. Thank, Thank you, you Anna and everybody. Bye-bye. Have a lovely day. Bye. Bye-bye.